which I hope to answer for you um, in the next, in the industry we call short form video. So in the, you guys think about it as like Instagram Reels, TikTok, um, short videos, right? So think about this. Kind of resonate with you guys? Like what stops you from creating short form videos? Not knowing how to edit, time, time, yep. time, time, time. Yep. I don't know how to make it good, right? Yes, That's kind of like a huge thing. This way to a minimum, and you can make it so it's not that hard. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. Does that feel good to you guys? Like what you were hoping to kind of learn today? Yes. Okay. Cool. Because I can, we can choose things. So let's talk about that after. Um, okay. So, so this is the truth, right? This is what I hope to have you guys all feeling today. So, your daily routine is content, which is something that I think a lot of folks don't necessarily uh, want to embrace or understand. How does that feel to you guys? Like your daily routine being content. Get ready with me, pack an order with me in this case. I, I'm bringing in other examples from other industries because I want you guys to see. One of the things that separates like Yellow House from other social media agencies is that we go across industries to bring in best practices and that's why a lot of our real estate accounts are so successful because we bring in like best practices from retail, best practices from other. So, this is a best practice from Are we retail. Are a presentation on the building or next? Oh, yeah. This is, the, your daily routine is content, okay? Like, get ready with me, come along with me. This is how I stage a house. This is how I set up for an open house. This is how I create a brochure. This is how I network. This is, does that make sense? Yeah. So your daily routine being content. By the way, if you guys email me, Jessica at Yellow House Consulting, I'll send you this whole presentation. It's 70 slides, um, but you have to email me for it, and then I'll get it to you. Um, so just bringing yourself, being yourself, can bring in the right viewers. And this is so counterintuitive. I picked this example for you guys specifically because it's going to feel like not great it's gonna feel like this is a weird thing that she's telling me to do but I want you to see um, the way that being authentic can kind of help to to bring in the right viewers to your brand okay so this guy let's see if it plays last year he opened a mac and cheese restaurant thinking he knew what people want what he didn't do though was mix the cheese into the noodles supply the toppings that people actually wanted or even bake the thing for that matter he didn't even realize how terrible this was Okay, so this is a guy who owns a macaroni and cheese business, right? And he's talking about why he is the least likely person to do this and why, like, basically nobody should come to his place or trust him or whatever. So, it seems like a really bad idea to make this video, right? Like, why would you ever do a video like this? It's literally like you're, you're doing, like, an anti-sales pitch. Well, if you've got... Tremendously? tremendously? Yeah. Right. Yes. Within those 13 million views, is your, your buyers in there somewhere, right? Yes. So, it may not feel comfortable, and it may not be in line with your personal brand, but the trade-off is like 13 million views or whatever, the chance for it. So, I wanted you guys to see just how being completely out of the comfort zone of what you're used to and comfortable with can bring in insane reach. Um, it's it's very that, powerful. That was organic. Just it was organic. Yes, we know him. I mean, this is and we do this too um, for brands. So, so that's the definition of going viral. Right? Yes, that is such an overused term, but I would say going that's like going super viral, right? Thirteen million views is like life changing, business changing, um, and we've seen it happen with our clients. Uh, not every client, but it does happen. The ones who kind of like are flexible and able to feel good if I'm being my super authentic <laughs> self. Um, 
like we all get dressed up to go show houses, right? We get we get dressed up to come to work. We want to look great. We we don't want to show how the sausage is made necessarily, you know. So so this is why on social media, I think it becomes really important to focus on your personal brand, um, outline your goals, lean into your niche, and assign yourself some brand traits. So this is a lot to read. And like I said, I'll send this to you guys if you're interested. Um, but let's go through it really quickly. So who can tell me what their personal brand is? Does anybody have an idea? What your life and your hobbies and What's your personal um, There is a, a real estate agent called uh, Megan, the mermaid realtor. Have you guys heard of her? No. No? Okay. Whenever I see mermaids, I think of her. When I think about you, I think about warm, caring, just wanting to get the job done. How, who else has like a unique, you know, like it's a u unique value proposition, right? Well, I mean, Go. we always uh, advertise ourselves as twins, so we are the Peralta brothers, so we have uh -huh. created a brand of our last name. Yes. As realtors, as a no, being twins. Yeah, you're the, so right, you're the realtor twins. So I actually, I know that I've seen you guys on social, and that like resonated with me when you walked in. So that's an example of doing a really good job with like personal branding. If you can sum it up in a way that differentiates you from other many realtors in South Florida, really the question is like, what makes me not like everybody else around me? You well, know, when you say so, twins, everybody knows. Yeah, they are like, exactly. Everyone. Yeah, right. Yeah. And when I think <laughs> when I think Fort Lauderdale, like mermaid, I think of Megan Romine, who I'll. I'll pull her profile up here. But so that's kind of what this is about. It's leaning into your niche, and I'll send you guys all this stuff. It's um, it's very helpful to just take a moment to kind of think about that. So this is somebody who does all the things. This is Megan. She shares the good and the bad. You should take a peek at her. I've never met her in person. I don't work for her. I've done zooms with her but that's about it so there's no like ulterior motive so that's what I want you to come away with today on social media it is best done through short authentic videos created by you so let's kind of like audit yes let's do it because I could go through all this stuff with you and I'll send this to you after but I think maybe it would be even more valuable to like just go through some profiles. You bought some, so they're not real? Okay, got it. All right, well at least she admits it. I would not, <laughs> I would not advise. It says, always be, always be filming. Like if I was gonna give you guys one big takeaway, it would be always be filming. And I'm always like this. <laughs> In front of people. And Jamie, because it wasn't social media bound. But when I hear things like this, and I yes. know it, it's outside of my comfort zone, I am terrible about the videos. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I'm in the video. Yeah. Like you, but they're open to, and they. Isn't it funny how little, uh, much more, of uh, restraint? I'll get there eventually. I swear. All right. Oh, and by the way, here I'll I'll go on this. So, if you're gonna invest in one thing. Invest in a good phone. It doesn't have to be an iPhone, but because you always want to be doing this because if somebody is scrolling through Instagram I always want to shoot like this, but it's the world is like this now whether we like it or not I guarantee you cinematographers hate it photographers hate it, but this is the way that it is right now um, So if you're gonna invest in one thing Yes, it depends on what type of media you're doing Way. You have to do it that way. Unless, it's true, unless, unless you're doing shorts. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now that our course better vertical, right? Um, my developer has a screen that's vertical. A big, she turns her computer screen vertical so that she can see like the phone view. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. All right, I'm going to leave you guys with some tips on shooting with the iPhone because this is your tool. This is like you have a supercomputer in your pocket, right? So this is my tip, always vertical. And then this weird thing called the grasshopper stance, which is super uncomfortable, but I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's your legs are spread and you are bending your knees a little bit 
and you're, you've got two hands on your phone, okay? This is really important. I've trained people who um, work, you know, work with you guys to do this. It's, it makes so much difference if you're doing this, you're shaky. Mm -hmm. If you're doing this and you're like centered, your, your center of gravity or whatever, you're, you're more stable. So the, I call it the grasshopper stance. Actually, somebody else coined that, not me. But it is so helpful. And women want to drop the heels. Like, there's a reason I'm not wearing heels today, and I never do. It's because it screws with your with your iPhone videos. So it's a funny little tip, but it's really it's invaluable. Like this, change, it changes everything. Um, sh so short clips. That's another great tip. If you can do shorter clips, it requires less editing. Using cap do you get some questions about captions? Yeah, like, like yeah, Ask I have a okay. question because sometimes I don't I don't know what kind of uh, you know like the font do I have huh? to use, you know, because sometimes I just see like a small brand is actually really important, right? So I would just in an ideal world leave it all public and and really lean into your personal profile. Yeah. So it's okay to post like your lifestyle as a realtor? Yes, I'm like an anti-social person. And to me, the, the, the payoff like is not worth the, the drawback, but for if I was a real estate agent or a realtor, I absolutely would lean into my personal profile and I would make it as public as I could. And I would do lifestyle videos. I would do, this is my favorite place to have brunch and grickle. This is, these are my top three uh, neighborhoods, like bistros that Nexo residents will enjoy. Like I would just really lean into that stuff and I wouldn't think too hard about it. I would just go to these places and I would do video and I would like follow people, send it to them. Video and really video and picture. Always video. Yeah. And we have videos. Because pictures are gonna creep in. Yeah. Like pictures are just gonna sneak in and they're always gonna be there. So that's why I have the mindset of like, video first, always video. All those stats that I showed in the beginning about how there's a billion reels and short form videos shared per day over DM on social media, that's just video. It's and not photos. Would you come through reels and better than uh, stories? So in the grid. And then in the caption, maybe I'm gonna do my kind of just listing info. You can do that. I mean, people are going to your 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 grid for this reason. Yeah. 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 What do you think is best to uh, for real estate, TikTok or Instagram? That's and can I combine them for real estate? Yeah. You, yeah. So you can combine them. You can repurpose content. So later at some point in this presentation, I think I might actually have. I have this, a very specific question about, about okay. that. Can I create okay. content for TikTok and post it on Instagram? Is I do this, yeah. Yes. So there's a really, software does everything. This, like, have this in your mind, there's an app for everything. So if you want to do it, it's possible. What you're talking about is taking a piece of short form video and you've already created it, maybe you've spent some time editing it, why wouldn't you want to post it as a YouTube short, as an Instagram reel, as a TikTok? And that's what, I, we do that for clients. So there's repurpose.io is a great software for this. I use it. Is it a app on the phone? It's on, it's a desktop app, I believe, a web-based. Um, What's the name again? Repurpose.io, but there's a couple of others too that do this. So think, if, like an ideal Repopos. strategy is being focused on creating short form, vertical, authentic content. Okay. Use a software like Repurpose, and then have it post to YouTube Shorts, to Instagram, to TikTok. That's a great strategy. Even LinkedIn sometimes too. How many of you guys are on LinkedIn? Yeah, I love LinkedIn. I do too because there's no, there's no like uh, BS. You know, nonsense on there. I was just like, people are polite. It's like being at a dinner party. What application do you use to edit videos? So, I have a slide on this. I use. So, that's why I distilled it down to these three. Like, loves it. So, you know, if you don't want to be in the TikTok universe, I would say I'll give you guys two other 
ones. Um, in stories, I N stories, and then Mojo M O J O. Those are the ones that we use at Yellow House. So I'm like giving away all my secrets for free. <laughs> <laughs> but that's we use that. Um, I mean, we also use like more professional editing too, but it gets the job done. Uh, they say about in the media the TikTok is owned by a Chinese company right. and they have some issues about privacy yeah. and uh, how how the how you your takeaway about this could be like something is going to backfire you because of the privacy should they are using a lot of in artificial intelligence to collect like, you know, really no, like, it, like financial information, all these things. This is, all right, so this is the truth. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge, like, uh, social media fan, even though it's what I do for a living. I'm not millennial. I'm X generation, I'm but I'm tech savvy I'm by myself. I'm really sober about social media and that, you know, I don't love any particular platform. But I was at TikTok headquarters in, in the U.S. like a week and a half ago, and this is my proof. Um, they're so focused on doing what's best for their users, at least in the U.S. Like, I, I don't know who their boss is or whatever, and I'm not, like, I don't work for them, but um, I just think they want to be the best platform they could be, at least in the U.S., and they have, you know, I don't know. I don't know what data is getting kind of, you know, brought from there to, I just don't know. But I think they're, they would say they're an entertainment platform too, which is really interesting. Okay. So, does that answer your question? I okay. Mean, I've given up on Since, time since I mean, I have, I mean, have the, 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 I have, if you have time, just to use one app, just 15 minutes a day, what app you use? Uh, Instagram, TikTok? Whatever one that you guys like. So, what I say is that you have to have, make it a habit to be good at social media. So if you're somebody who loves uh, plants and you find a really great like little you know, set of accounts on Instagram that are about like being a crazy plant lady, mm -hmm. and that's what brings you to social media, then do that. But you, the key is to make it a habit. So you have to kind of play around and figure out what's the one that you like the most. Does that make sense? Okay. Like, think about your hobbies, think about, it's like, are you just so passionate about real estate content that that's what you're going to mostly consume? I like interior design content, so I'm always on Instagram doing what, like following and liking all the pretty interior design stuff, and that's what gets me on social media. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't want to use it, um, if that makes sense. So I find like where my personal interests intersect with the platform, and then I stick with whatever platform I find the most comfortable with that interest. Does that help at all? Okay. Um, yeah. So who else has questions? I love that. I love answering your questions. Uh, yeah. No. Consistent so, story <laughs> out of the day. So, five away like? every day. Like, get, get up, take a picture of your alarm if you're oh up at 5 a.m. No. I'll, take you, like, I'll take you through it. It's like anything can be content. But, that's, but the thing is, if it's not worth it to you, then you don't have to do it, right? Like, just being consistent. Like, you know, somebody like, uh, like a big influencer said, you five reels a week, right? Like five few reels a week, two the thoughts the a week, line, five you know, to eight story per day. CEO, Instagram, that's what you would say. So yeah, we know all those answers, but it's, not a, it's still not a magic bullet. Like the magic bullet is the authenticity. And then what time you, you put the work between those? Those things. Oh, what in between? Yeah, what time you put the work in as a realtor between those yeah, stories? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the, the stories at the end of the day disappear, correct? Yes. 24 hours, so you can see them in highlights, and they that is, you suggest to save them. I would. Even? Yeah, yeah if, they're, if they're really like germane to lifestyle or your brand or important to you for a reason, then I would save them in your highlights. Your highlights could be like, Family, yeah, you, you know, like things like that. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. But I would say, don't overlook TikTok. I would, you know, eighty percent of the questions I get are usually about Instagram. Don't overlook TikTok. It's so, it can be so useful. You can get thirteen point three million views on a really crappy macro. Okay, so my question. Uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
<laughs> what is this new thread thing that like don't even really worry about it for now? I would say I like soon as you like you kind of get it used to instead of them, something new comes up. Put on the screen in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Prove it. Uh -huh. it's, it's when something shared a billion times a day over DM without any investment from behind it, it's organic. That's when you know there's a critical mass, and this is going to be something that's part of our, our culture for the next. So it's like, it's like a Twitter kind of thing, right? Kind of, in a way. Twitter yeah. just leaned into short form video too. So I would say don't get so caught up in the platforms. Don't fall in love with Instagram. I think that's crap advice <laughs> because Instagram could go away. And Instagram, like this is not thing Instagram. The truth, the truth is though that your account could go away. You know, Instagram, all these platforms, they're, they can be fickle and they can decide to just delete your account. Like yeah, that. better like you spend all these practice. years that like, build yeah. build the audience as a boom. It and happens. Gone. It happens. So that's why, as much as I talk about social media, I always tell clients that's why I don't that follow the, the audience that you own is the only audience that you can rely on. So no, it's personal. the audience that you own. It's the people that you talk to, but it's also your email list. Yeah. So use your social media to build your email list. Yeah. Instagram can just shut you off. You have no recourse. Literally, none. Yeah. Facebook, same thing. They yeah. could, you know, they could do that to me. But I have my, I have my redundant backup accounts, and I have all my like I'm prepared for it. Good for you, know? you. Because they, I, I don't take it for granted that they can shut it off. But I have my email list, and you guys should all have your email list too. That's even more. I can do a whole thing about email. It's more important. Do you want to manage my page? <laughs> I'm too expensive. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, what's the most user friendly app to edit reels, to, no, to create reels? So it's, it's this, InShot. InShot. Um, and I also love CapCut. And then the other two that I mentioned, Mojo and InStories, I really love. Download those, learn them, use them. It's, I, these are all on your phone, too. Right. So ideally, though, you would just take really short clips and then not have to edit them so much. Like, that's why I say short clips. That's my, my big advice. So how much time do I have? How much time do you want? <laughs> how much time do I have? What time is it now? Sorry, I'm not. Oh, love it. More questions. Wait, okay. so as far as okay, so what B roll is. Okay, so B roll is like background roll. It's like what I was filming before when I said everybody say hi. Like, it's it's just video of your daily life. It could be, um, I can take this, stand out on the street, and then just stand there for like a minute and have the cars go by. Right, and it, it's B-roll. So it's stuff that you just take without, it's video that you take without a plan, mm -hmm. and it's really, really important. And I do this, it is a game changer. Mm -hmm. So like when I'm at the airport, in the Delta Lounge yesterday, I had like my, I had my camera set up on a table, and I just walked, I did my work, and I had it recording me. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that later for something. I'm not sure what, you know, maybe I'll put uh, like some inspiring quote about being an entrepreneur, maybe something about how much I love to travel, maybe, I don't know, but that B-roll is so important because it's a great shortcut. It's like, you just never know, and you also never know what's going to happen too. So maybe you're taking a video and somebody cracks a funny joke or... Uh, an adorable dog walks by or something like that. I'm, I'm always like this. And it is, that's one of the biggest um, and you have pieces of advice. You have content and you just save it. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I, like, I will have, let's see, here. So, I don't know, this has worked lately. I, I was just taking, like, video of our um, Yellow House work retreat. Like, photos and videos. And I don't really have a plan at all. And I just popped it into CapCut and it like spit this out. And then I just wrote work lately. It took me 30 seconds. I'm not even kidding. There you go. You're doing it. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's, so that's not really B roll, but it's, um, let me see if I can put a good B roll example for you guys. So they have templates where you can just upload them. You are getting so much smarter that you don't have to worry about that anymore because. 
People can click see translation under anything that you post, mm -hmm. and then they see the translation. So don't worry about it too much. If you have graphics that have your uh, like really important keywords, like my penthouse left, or you know last opportunity for whatever, and you need to convey it in a graphic, obviously that graphic is not going to be able to change languages. So I would do. I would worry about that, and that's kind of when you might want to hire somebody to help you out with like ads or what have you. But the language thing, no. it's all built in now. You do not have to worry about that too much. In fact, if you do, it can get a little sloppy and clunky. Um, the platform does a really good job of translating stuff. And what about the hashtag? Do you, do you recommend us like hashtag all the time? Like as many as? Yeah, so uh, I do recommend hashtags on TikTok. Okay. And so I can do a whole thing about TikTok. Um, and on Instagram? Basic, so Instagram, I'd recommend eight hashtags. That's okay. what they say. It's eight per post. It's like the magic whatever. But I eight think hashtag. It's building an audience makes it not really matter. Hashtags might help you to reach somebody in a specific niche. But what's the purpose of hashtags? It's to help the platform know how to categorize your content. So if you're ha if you're doing hashtags and you're just throwing everything at the wall, it is not going to work. It's the platform is going to make a choice about how to categorize your content. So if you're doing hashtags, research them, literally like put it into Instagram and see what comes up. And if it looks something like something that makes sense to you, and like that you want to see your content be among then that's a good one to use. But don't then do something that's like totally the opposite. You know what I mean? Don't be like budget destinations, the hashtag, and then like Luke's living or something like that. That would be, that would be, you wouldn't help yourself. Is it best to post during the week or the weekend or? The week? Whatever works, just be consistent. So I would say uh, changing up strategies can be really rough. So if you go from posting Monday to Friday, and then some, all of a sudden you start doing like Saturdays and Sundays, and ignoring the, the, the weekday, you might see a big dip. So it's weird, but consistency ends up being the most important thing. So for you guys, like open houses on Sundays, like, you know, if you're doing that, and then it's like your mon you know, Monday, you're back at it, you're posting on Monday, and then just keep doing that. Um, but also, if you want to stick with business hours, that's fine too. I have clients that we just post Monday to Friday for. So let's say you just have somebody that you met, you ask them to Putting the social back into social media, DMing them, con conversing with them, commenting on their stuff. Okay. So it really is like real life rules do apply. Um, reciprocation is like a social construct that we all accept, and it works on social media too. So it's like if somebody's following you, why wouldn't you follow them back? Yeah. It's, in a way, it's polite. Yeah. Similarly with comments, um, if you want somebody to comment on your stuff, you should comment on theirs. If you want somebody to interact with you, you should interact with them. So that's the best thing to do. Does that answer? Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's cool. timing. It's a lot of time. It's it can be, yeah. yeah. But it's also, it's like authenticity is like the one thread that kind of runs through everything. It's like. Just don't be fake about it. So if that's your really what you want, and that's who you want to follow you, then you will naturally kind of gravitate toward interacting with them. And that kind of makes a lot of sense. It's like the way it is in real life, but on digital. What else? Questions? The organic potential for growth to start is, TikTok. is insane on TikTok. Um, it's unmatched by any other platform. But when you start on TikTok, Keep in mind that everything that you do is a data point for the platform. So if you're somebody who wants to attract buyers in South Florida who are looking, who are actively shopping, or you want to um, network with people in your industry, then you don't want to be searching for like hashtag Netflix, hashtag Yellowstone, spoilers. You know, like you don't want to be, so everything is a data point, so act like a realtor when you're on TikTok. So I always tell people to, first thing on TikTok, start researching hashtags that you want to use and make a list. So if you're starting from scratch on TikTok, just 
literally do hashtag real estate Miami, Miami real estate, and see what comes up. And then just start acting, like giving the platform the data points that it needs to know who you are and then who to serve your content to. And it really is that easy. That doesn't exist on other platforms in that way. So that's why I always say, start a TikTok if you can. I love it. You tell me what. <laughs> is TikTok kind of connected to the... Um, even more important on TikTok than anywhere else. Short, 15 second or less videos. Yeah. Do you have any advice for WhatsApp, since it's, a, it's a, the same company, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, how to work the WhatsApp, how to connect you, what, do, do you have any advice? So, um, WhatsApp. It is, WhatsApp is owned by Meta, Yes. and you, if you use it in your real estate practice, then it makes sense to integrate it into your social media, but if you're not using it, maybe not so much. Um, I always think that those platforms, they want you to use all of their features. And I feel like, you know, just it makes sense that if you use more features owned by them, they're probably going to like your profile more. So I would just say, like, yes, incorporate it where it makes sense. There are ads you can create um, pretty easily that lead to WhatsApp messages. But you have to make sure you're, like, actually checking them. So if you're not somebody who's comfortable using WhatsApp, I wouldn't just, like, make a big effort to tr to use it all of a sudden just because. But some people find it a really, to be a really helpful messaging tool, especially for buyers and sellers who are outside the country. So, do you guys use WhatsApp? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, at that point though, it is like, what you're talking about is probably something that uh, you would need to invest in, you know, like digital marketing ads and, and that type of thing, digital media ads. Um, I have just one account to the WhatsApp, one account to the Instagram, one account to the Facebook, and they try to connect all of them together. Yeah, and then also, right, and then your business account too, but yeah. The business account for what? Well, so if you're, if you are um, uh, on WhatsApp, that's like a personal WhatsApp. I do have a phone, business, right? business, business WhatsApp. Yeah, so, so then just, I would just stick with what you're doing. One, one account to keep it simple. For everything. On everything, ideally, yeah, I think so. Depends on whether you're uh, like you own a brokerage with multiple agents or you are mostly focused on your own sales. I don't have a, a, a team, but no brokerage. Okay, so yeah, I would just I, I would lean into the WhatsApp statuses then if that's what you do. I'm not no, WhatsApp I, is not social media though. It's like a, yes. it's, a it's a DMing tool. It's like iMessage, um, but like with the status. I'm sure that iMessage will in like a year or two allow you to do like a status update too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's all, every platform's trying to do all the things, right? So that's the direction it's moving in. Well, there's a, uh, for example, yeah. it's sticking, it's sticking with in it. the same ones I put, you know, like in LinkedIn and in, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Red and mm -hmm. uh, all of those ones, you know, and the same I do in uh, WhatsApp. I did a DC post and just do it once and I just post it everywhere. I think that's great. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, if I was a realtor, I would do that. I would just, and I would also have a TikTok so that you're showing. You know, at the same time, they see you every.